don't belong to summer cones Now that the boys are here again from Southwest Christian, the home team on the scoreboard. At goal, starting Mike Van Otterloo. Number eight is starter Kent Corbin. Number nine is starter Jordan Coy. Number 19 is starter Mike Christians. A starter, Daniel Swear. Number 10, a starter, Daniel DeWitt. Number 7, a starter, Jason Jasper. Number 2, a reserve, Ross Feikelman. Number 20, a starter, Andrew Tinklenberg. <laughs> Number five, a starter. <laughs> Not quite, Matt, Elmer, Marcus you know, Roskamp. <laughs> Number three, Dan Wagner in reserve role. <laughs> Number 17, a starter, Brian Booby. <laughs> Number 14, in reserve role, Ryan Brower. Number 13, a starter, Jeremy Van Hoff. 22, a reserve, Chris Van Dyke. Number 4, a reserve, Sean Prince. Number 16, Karsten Bastian. Number 6, is reserve, Jordan Henstra. Number 15, a reserve, Brant Van Dyke. Goalie Corey Vanderlucht. The Eagles are coached by Leon Vandere, manager Adam Reiswijk, statistician Kayla Holstein.
make a big noise playing in the street gonna be a big man someday you got mud on your face you big disgrace kicking your can all over the place singing we will we will rock you A big disgrace, waving your banner all over the place. We will, we will rock you. Sing it out. We will, we will rock you. Buddy, you're an old man, poor man, pleading with your eyes, gonna make you zombie someday. You got mud on your face. Big disgrace, somebody better put your bag into your place.
a little higher.
Another one bust the dust. Hey, hey. Another one bust the dust. Hey. Push me around But they can't keep a good babe down There may be time And I'm feeling low I lose sight of the dream Don't lose sight of the dream But that's alright Soon I know I'll be back on top again Running things You can't keep a good man down But they can't keep a good man They can't keep a good man They can't keep a good man down Whoa, whoa, whoa They can't keep a good man down
I'm on the edge, I know the less I work real hard to collect my cash Tick, 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 take the time When I'm going, I'm going for mine Open your ears and you will hear it I tell you this cause there's no limit
like a double rhyme, double on a heavenly level. Bang the bass, turn up the double. Radical mind, day and night, all the time. Seven, fourteen, fly the mind. Maniac, radiac, win of the game. I'm the lyrical Jesse James. Quality, I possess. Some say I'm fresh, but my voice goes through the mess of the mic.
That's a big part of it too, but I thought, he's a pretty wise guy, I think. I don't know where he is. Always oh, right. <laughs> Real wise in his boss. <laughs> anyway. Let's first of all start with a hand again for the guys and for the last night. <laughs> and uh, that's where I want to start what I'm going to say today. Wow. Uh, last night was the most amazing moment in sports that I've witnessed. That I've witnessed a lot. It was, it was awesome. But, uh, you guys have me worried. <laughs> Yesterday, Mr. Banner asked me to put some perspective on whatever happened last night, some biblical perspective, I suppose you'd say. And I have to admit, I was a little bit intimidated. Then, last night, for about 78 minutes, I thought my job was going to be easy. It's uh, pretty easy to talk about how great God is when you win. Okay? And that one old lead, although I was white-knuckled, I thought, we're going to do this. And... Uh, I could have talked about a million things. I could talk about perseverance, the little engine that could kind of kept going there. I could have talked about the teamwork, the body of Christ. I could have talked about how iron sharpens iron. <laughs> yeah. This is one they've heard before. And that's one thing I do want to say before I get into the meat of my message, is that iron does sharpen iron. All of you, every single one of you, are part of this victory because without any one of you pushing others, those of you that didn't see the field last night, you are the guys that push the ones above you to be the best that they could be. And so every one of you are important to this victory. And uh, that's one thing I do want to say. Iron does sharpen iron. And um, so all of you, number one through number, how many are your team? 21. 21 are part of this victory. In the hand for that. think about what to say, forgive me, but I started to think about what to say if, if, focus here is on if, you lost, which is a lot harder to talk about. And then, yeah, there was this, suddenly there was this pass, uh, and there was this goalie coming out, and there was this flash of gold in the midst of about three blue, and in the midst of that mess, there's this little soccer ball bouncing, bouncing, <laughs> bouncing. <laughs> It seemed like any time this blue jersey would come and kick it away, and some, suddenly I saw the, the net rustle, and I thought, hmm, that just went in the goal. <laughs> and I realized what happened. And then it was pandemonium and mayhem and, and awesome, awesome finish uh, to game. Now, question for you guys. Mike, Jason, Brian, Jeremy, Andrew especially, how did you keep that ball from going in the net 33 times? <laughs> instruments and fans wearing black and gold, the fact that we can call every 10 minutes back home, four hours, <laughs> to a room full of volleyball players watching Monday's game, Monday's, watching Monday's game on video while you were playing the championship game, all of that, with 
depends on God's grace. So, did God's grace shine on us, specifically last night, because we are a Christian school, and that's why the balls bounce where they did? It seems to me that to say that uh, is the wrong thing to say, because then it doesn't depend on God's grace. It depends on us and how pleasing we are to God. And that is not the right answer to, to think about these things and to think about how wonderful this event is. So that brings me to the point I was going to make, had the ball bounced differently last night, and things turned out differently than we hoped. What's important about your soccer season this year is not actually the experience you're having today. It's not the trophy that you hoisted, hoisted last night or the banner that will hang here someday. That's all icing on the cake. That's awesome. That's the mountaintop you're on is the sheer grace of God. And that's sweet. That's all you can, that's, it's absolutely the sweetest thing. The important thing though, the thing that you not, must not forget is the climb along the way. The climb to the mountaintop you're on right now. The difficulties, the steepnesses, the steepness, the times you slipped and stumbled. <coughs> <laughs> we got that. We got that. The times we got you that. slipped and stumbled. You've got to remember those too. That makes the mountaintop sweeter. Um, the times you helped back each other up. Every step towards the goal which you've attained today, a state championship, every step is the point. Your relationship with God as you go toward any goal is the point. What if you hadn't won? What if you weren't on the mountain right now, as Holy Angels is not right now? Would you have enough insight to see that the point is what you learned along the way? When we attain the mountaintop of success, we have the tendency to forget what got us there and who got us there. Your verse this year for your soccer team, your theme, says it all about who got you there. Psalm 127, verse 1. Unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stand guard in vain. What should be your response to this awesome mountaintop? Well, you should celebrate, obviously. The sheer grace of God. Celebrate God's grace. It's awesome. But also, I want you to think of this verse, James 4, verse 10. A song we sing a lot, you all know it. Blah, blah, blah. James 4.10, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. I have no doubt in my mind that if we forget that, to humble ourselves before the Lord, he will stop lifting us up, and the banners will stop carrying his gym. But you have achieved it, and I don't want to take anything away from that. But remember, thank God for the grace he's given you. Humble yourselves before him, and he will continue to lift you up. The last image I want to leave you with today, <laughs> is an image of yourselves that I saw last night. The last image. After the awards, after the hardware that you got, that you took home, you knelt for a prayer. Where was the trophy? Yeah. It was outside your circle. Yep. It was not a part of you. Because that, that's nice. But what was the It was outside the circle as it should have been. Then you took a lap. Where was the trophy? I think, maybe I missed it, but I think it was left behind, where it should have been. Why? Because you were remembering the climb along the way to the mountaintop of the state championship. You were remembering what got you there, each other and the sheer awesome grace of God. Don't forget how you got here. Celebrate it, but don't forget it. And don't forget uh, to apply how you got here to your next goal. Your theme has been all year, and even the crowd chanted it, just one more goal. Just one more. Now that you've attained all you'd hoped for in soccer, now what? Don't stop using that theme, just one more goal, for the rest of your life. And any time you reach a mountaintop, remember, humble yourselves before the Lord for the privileges he gives you. Congratulations to you all, and praise God from whom all blessings flow. Let's give God a hand for the grace of Two players talk on behalf of the team, uh, Swear, Swire, and Marcus. So, Mike and Morgan. I just want to dedicate these six playoff games and pretty much the whole season to our defense. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
and vol. <laughs> I go way back to the first game of the season against Minnewaska. He made a great save on a penalty kick. I think that set the tone for how you can play the rest of the season. So. Mr. Alfreds, uh, Matt Stanley. Uh, more time and effort than most of us know, I bet. So thank you, Mr. Alfreds. And uh, we also want to thank Denise for all her work in the office. or how many phone calls she took, but she deserves a big thank you. And uh, also all the teachers on the staff, I'm not sure what everybody did or how everybody worked, but I know they all pitched in somehow, so thank you teachers. Uh, I also want to say thank you to our two assistant coaches, Mr. Hookstra and Mr. Casperson. They worked a lot with us and uh, yeah, they helped us out quite a bit. And a very special thank you to Mr. Vandere. He's put up with us, put up, put up with a lot from us this season, and uh, he's always kept us on task. He's always pushed us to be our best, and he made us run when we didn't want to. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> Not a good sign. <laughs> and uh, he saw the potential in this team, I think, more than we did. And uh, he brought it out in us. So thank you, Mr. Andrew. Certainly left 
a lot of their heart and soul in the dome. And uh, teachers, you need to know that we gave out these passes on the Blake night. And of course, they had to have these to get in the game so they could keep track of them. And nobody lost their passes. It all worked out great. So, you do not need to accept excuses, at least from these 21 gentlemen. <laughs> when they come to class and they don't have stuff, they know how to do it. <laughs> A lot of the thank yous have gone on, and uh, I guess I need to say some thank yous too, and some of this probably is repetitious. And of course, whenever you start thanking people, Sometimes people get left out, but isn't that the way teens are and the way life is in that um, there's always the people behind the scenes, but then there's always people even behind those people. And so it goes a long way, and so it, it probably takes a village to make it state championship. And many, many people are included, and you've already heard about Holfers and Bootsman and Denise and the pet band. It was great having our pet band there because it was our pet band, not somebody else. And it sounds wonderful. Snyder's uh, to thank her enough for talk about behind the scenes uh, amazing and our bus drivers learned how to drive in the wind if they didn't already know that <laughs> some really hard work was done particularly the night coming back from the blade game Brooke Heiss and Bookstra taped ankles I, I know how to tape ankles but I hate it <laughs> so, uh, and I'm not that good at it since they are. Um, they took over. Brooke Heiss actually would take my boys before volleyball practice sometimes, so uh, thank you a lot for that. He also is one of the bus drivers um, that helped us out, as you know. Staff support. Volleyball team hasn't been mentioned. They're the ones who made those banners for our bus. <laughs>
say any more about that because I'll break down ball and so we'll just move on. <laughs> the team, you guys, thanks for the ride. I mean, you know, they had to do all the running. I just got to say shabam all the time. I love that word. <laughs> It actually comes from uh, my high school basketball coach who always used that word when he made us run. And his philosophy was, if you can't outskill them, you run them into the ground. Well, that's <laughs> it. And so, uh, guys, it's, it's, uh, you just can't say enough. And, and maybe we'll just leave it at that. So um, we'll see what else I can say here. Some season comments. You know, where do you start with this whole thing? Um, maybe you should start in grade school. I remember when, when some of these guys were way little kids, second, third grade, and we'd play soccer. They were always on the other field playing soccer rather than playing football like a lot of other kids do. And so there was something then already. I remember particularly Pooh being you know, playing soccer, a little squirt. And um, I thought, oh, hey, maybe something's happening here. Well, yeah, something did happen. Or maybe we should start last spring when I got these guys together and I said, uh, you guys have some goals and a lot of potential. And I read them a story, um, and I don't know if they remember that or not, but uh, you can have a lot of talk and a lot of whatever, but unless you start doing something about it, of course, nothing's going to happen. So these guys uh, all summer started to get in shape. They came into the season the best shape of probably any team I've ever had. And uh, they worked during the summer on their skills. And all of that, of course, is part of that mountain climb that Mr. Scott talked about. Maybe the whole thing started at the end of last season when with 13 seconds left in the second overtime against Prior Lake, they scored a goal. And we were the ones that came home, you know, losers and sad and so on. Um, there was something about that ending of that game that I think maybe was a motivator. I don't know. Or maybe you should begin on August 13 at 6 o'clock with the word shabam when they took off on a two-mile run. I don't know. But in any case, uh, we're at the end of things now, so maybe it's not so important to talk about beginnings. I also recall talking to a number of parents of these guys when they were freshmen, particularly seniors when they were freshmen, saying, um, your son's going to play a lot of soccer. And I could see potential back then already, and of course also a love for the game. As far as the season goes, probably a turning point would be the Western game, which we all want to forget. <laughs> so, something didn't go right. Oh, something. Almost everything didn't go right in that game. But, maybe some of you know this, but the next day, or Wednesday in practice, we had maybe the best practice of the year. And that was the turning point. And some things happened in that practice. And then from there, right on through, it was just amazing. So um, I think that Western game probably was a good thing for us. I know it was a good thing for us because it was a turning point. In, in looking at the season, I have some uh, coaching hints for any of you prospective soccer coaches. First of all, when you're making kids do wind sprints, at a certain point, they start giving you the stare, which means, <laughs> Coach, I hate you, quit this. <laughs> at that point, ignore it, look away, and say, shabam. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's exactly what I did. <laughs> Secondly, uh, in preparation for the state tournament, you got to do something. So I always wanted to try this. Took our two goalposts, placed them about 30 yards apart, backwards to each other, so they were open to the opposite side. Threw two balls out there, and we played two ball soccer with no out of bounds with backwards goals. I don't know if that is what wins you state championships, but it did work for us. And a third hint number of shots on goal doesn't matter, scoring percentage does. <laughs> all year. One of them, or a couple of them that kind of fit together was uh, playing with intensity, <clears throat> hustle, never give up. I think we saw that last night. We also worked on winning the ball, which kind of goes along with that. We also worked on a thing I just called focus, and the focus was we're going to focus on the game, we're going to focus on our team, we're going to focus on 
playing for God. We're not going to get into it with the other team. We're going to stay clean as much as we're able. And no revenge, none of that kind of stuff. And this team came through on that, particularly last night. Many of you probably, maybe none of you, saw the game between Holy Angels and Rochester Lords on Monday. I saw that game. By the end of the game, there was well over 40 fouls between the two teams. It was awful. And I was worried. So before the game, we talked about that. I said, you guys, guys have to maintain your focus. Get into the game, and it's clean as a whistle. I think at halftime, we had two, three fouls. And they had five, six, I don't know, one back. Um, I saw a totally different Holy Angels team last night than on Monday. And I think it's mostly because these guys refused to mix it up. And they maintained their own integrity. And for that, they probably deserve the best applause. Good one! Support! Support! Good one! Lose our head! Good one! Good one! Yes, yes. Oh! 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 Oh!
Kick it. Oh, 
Go, go, go! <laughs> okay, here we are in Edgerton, Minnesota. And Sherry and Lisa drinking their cappuccino and watching the soccer game. Yes! Speed, nice speed. Oh. 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 Oh.